Dear students, today I am going to speak about lotic habitat, running water habitats of rivers and streams, their zonation, limiting factors and biota of lotic habitat and their adaptations. Lotic habitats, have you ever seen rivers? You might have seen rivers. Have you ever thought where river originates, how it flows down, then uh, joins the river, uh, joins the sea, all these have you ever seen or else you should have developed the observation skills whenever you go to nature watch and you should see the how exactly river flows and what are the organisms you will find in the river, where river originates and all these uh, aspects. So you will find somewhere in the 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 down uh, in the somewhere in the hills in between the hills river originate and it flows down and you can see the path of the river here in this uh, picture. So lotic habitats are nothing but they are the streams and the rivers. So where streams begin are called headwaters. So many uh, uh, streams they begin in the uh, in the mountain area and uh, where the the snow melt you know. So the some uh, begin underground uh, spring, then they flow into the the small uh, streams. They join into small rivers. So you may see in this uh, pictures. So these are the small streams. So they join the small rivers. Small rivers later going to become the large river. So all these are the, the lotic habitats. So again here in this uh, pictures uh, I have shown here this is the, the course of uh, the uh, Sindhu river. You will find in the Himalaya where the river originates in the form of uh, spring and uh, then uh, you can see the small uh, streams they join to form uh, you know these uh, small rivers and uh, so many tributaries of uh, uh, Sindhu you know that uh, the uh, these are uh, Bias, Ravi, uh, uh, Chinab, Jhelum and all these they join then going to form the large the river Sindhu which joins the Arabian Sea. So this is a, just I have taken an example of one river similar you will find in other rivers whatever you see here uh, in Shomaga is uh, river Tunga it uh, originates in the uh, mountains near the Shringeri and uh, it uh, flows very fast and uh, uh, it is uh, joins with the another river Badra to form uh, Tungabhadra in Kodli then it uh, flows as a large river and you know how exactly it uh, flows in the near the Hospete and later it uh, joins the Bay of Bengal in uh, near Andhra state. So here in the course of a river the river uh, uh, is uh, cannot be studied as a whole it has uh, uh, divided or it has uh, made into several zones, zonation of uh, lotic habitat or a river. Uh, it has identified uh, many zones, but uh, uh, important one is uh, the one uh, where the I have shown here, this is the where in the Himalaya where the river originates as a spring, it is called Ukrinon, then it flows down in the downhill hypocrinon then it uh, flows into the small river so this is called rithurinon and uh, rithurinon uh, will you know it you can see several small rivers join to form the large river potomenon so you can see the the zonation longitudinal zonation of a river eucrinon hypocrinon rithurinon and potomenon Potomenon is a slow moving large river basin and Rithurinon, Hypocrinon they are all fast moving water you can make out here 
so this is the the streams you will find fast moving streams and small river or fast moving water you will find so zonation depending on velocity of water rapid or ripple zone so rapid moving water uh, you will find here the rapid moving water of uh, eucrinon hypocrinon and rhetorinon that is what i shown so the the river uh, you know this is uh, in this uh, part they are all fast moving water so they are they are not uh, going to accumulate silt in the bottom they are fast moving water then you can see the the so many river join to form a large river where you will see the the this is called a pod zone or a slow moving water slow moving water where lot of uh, silt accumulation so the large river or potomenon belongs to this so this is about a, a zonation of the uh, river water so there is a fast moving or ripple zone rapid zone a ripple zone and slow moving water or pod zone or potomenon so what are the limiting factors of lotic system so the in the the water flow in downhill in one direction what are the limiting factor you will find so the first thing is the water current which carries nutrients and organisms from one zone to another zone so nature and distribution and adaptation of lotic community depends on water velocity so water current is the the major factor then amount of dissolved oxygen so the dissolved oxygen depends on the speed of water and depth of water the amount of sediments all these factors affecting the amount of oxygen so the fast moving shallow bottom water where the dissolved oxygen a uh, high amount of dissolved oxygen you will find when compared to the slow moving sediment rich water in the slow moving water where you can see oxygen uh, dissolving capacity is lesser and uh, due to the lot of sediments uh, you will find the lot of decomposition activity oxygen used up for the the decomposition so you will naturally you will find less amount of oxygen then water flow it's also it is also a important limiting factor there are two types of water flow so laminar flow you will find with water moves parallelly and these are less erosive and uh, dissolves less amount of oxygen you can see this river where you can see this river the this is the the example for laminar flow then you can see the turbulent flow where you will find the movement of water more erosive in nature then and dissolves lot of oxygen so this is turbulent flow and laminar flow so the these two types of uh, uh, water flow having uh, different uh, um, property and uh, it is affecting the distribution and abundance of the biota in this type of rivers so then amount of oxygen depends on speed of water and depth of water and the amount of sediments i have already discussed so these are the fast moving water high amount of oxygen and the sediment rich water with low amount of oxygen then the sediments uh, and also the turbidity of water the light penetration is less so the, this also we can see in the in the fast moving water the you can see the bottom hard bottom whereas slow moving water where you can see the lot of uh, algal development not allowing the light rays to penetrate into the deep so this uh, uh, light penetration also forms a important factor so then basically in the lotic habitat running water or the river there are two types of basic stream habitats based on high quickly the water flows how quickly the water flows that is the fast running erosional water and slow moving pool water or pod zone you will find ripple zone and pod zone rapid moving water 
and slow moving water so this rapid zone has a the current great enough to keep the bottom clear there is no sedimentation so this is the the rapid zone and this is the pool zone the zone is occupied by specialized organism uh, they can firmly attach or cling because water uh, movement is very fast so they have the adaptations to attach to the bottom or to cling to the substrate whereas in the pool zone so where you will see the deeper water where the velocity of current is reduced uh, so the sand and silt accumulated in the bottom so uh, there is a burrowing animals swimming animals rooted plants uh, you will able to find it is almost to the the how exactly the the biota of that of a, a lake you will find in the pool zone so river in their upper uh, you know up, uh, upstream they are generally eroding and in the downstream they are less eroding and you can see lot of sediments quickly we can go through the differences between the rapid zones and the the pod zone so the 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 this is the erosional zone and these are the depositional zone so in the, the there is a shallow uh, area and you can see the the fast moving water and you can see the the uh, here you will see lot of sediments you will find slow moving water sedimentation is very less here and here you will find sedimentation then you can see the plants are they have a attachment to, they have a adaptation to attach to the hard bottom here you will find rooted plants and animals are uh, the here uh, they have uh, uh, aquatic insects uh, then snails fishes and uh, they have uh, uh, adapted to for the high oxygen levels here the animals they can live in the the reduced amount of or you can see lesser amount of oxygen and they can live in the sediments so here you can see the the organic uh, matter matter is lesser and here it is more organic matter you will find so this uh, difference between uh, rapid and the pod zone so this is uh, this graph so shows relative abundance and biodiversity between the the rapid uh, zone or ripple zone and that of the pool zone so you will able to find the abundance of these species and the biodiversity is lesser in fast moving uh, uh, region and they are more in the the slow moving water so this uh, let us uh, now uh, concentrate on uh, the biota of fast moving water and uh, their adaptations adaptation needed to keep organisms from washed off from the fast moving water so producers here in this uh, fast moving water they are filamentous algae attached to the hard bottom with the help of hold fast you will able to see the filamentous algae uh, they are eulothrix or else uh, cladophora spirogyra all these uh, they are blue green algae and uh, the mosses fontalis and all these uh, the, you will find here they attach to the bottom hard bottom with the help of some hold fast then similarly the consumers or the animals either they have flat body like planaria uh, they can uh, uh, attach it to the uh, hard bottom so that they are not get washed off or else uh, they have a sticky secretions like uh, snails and the lymphats so they attach to the bottom or uh, to the stones so that they are not going to be get washed off or else uh, you will find the biota of fast moving water you can see the the dipteran larvae or uh, simulin or chironomus larvae they have hooks to cling to the rocks you will find uh, these chironomus larvae they can able to they have hooks then similarly simulin larvae they have hooks to cling to the rocks or else the midge larvae they have suckers leech and uh, midge larvae they have suckers to attach to the rocks you can see the the leeches and uh, uh, the midge larvae they have attached to the the rocks with the help of their suckers then you will find uh, the 
Dipterin larvae helodus they have hooks to cling to the leaves and the stems of the water you will find uh, uh, stems of the water plants then the may uh, fly limb nymphs they have adhesive pads uh, so that they can attach to these uh, uh, you can see the the um, hard bottom orals to the substrate you can see so they have suckers for their attachment you will find so these uh, midge larvae dipterin larvae mayfly la nymphs damselfly nymphs all these uh, they can uh, with they can resist uh, this uh, fast moving water with the help of their uh, adaptations so either they have suckers they have adhesive pads or they have hooks so that they can cling into the the water plants or else to the the hard bottoms or stones etc they also show positive thigmo thigmotaxis the lotic animals they cling instinctively to hard surfaces and rocks and they move towards the substratum you can make out so the nymph or the larvae of dragonfly damselfly stonefly they are dorsoventrally flattened to minimize the body exposure to swift currents and cling to the substrate to feed on periphytons then the stone roller fish you will be able to see this stone roller fish they have in adaptations so they have a cartilaginous ridges so you will be able to find on their lower lip to scrape algae from the substratum so these are all the adaptations of uh, animals for fast moving waters they have a streamlined body to offer less resistance to water current fishes and nymph of a stone fly dragon fly inhabit inside the crevices and the, the rocks so that they are not going to washed off then very interestingly you will find uh, net spinning caddis fly or dipterin larvae they spin varieties of nests and they cement a nest around itself which acts as a shelter and as well as a food trap larvae living in running water use uh, heavy heavier components to increase their overall weight so that they are not going to get washed off it helps them uh, when moving in the 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 water current or even they the prevents from being washed off to the downstream so they use varieties of materials uh, to spin the or uh, to make the nest you can see so they they are not going to get washed off and as well as they can able to trap the small organisms as they their food these are the adaptations you will find in the caddis fly larvae so then what is the the biota of slow moving or pod zone it is almost similar to that of the biota of the the lake what i discussed in my previous classes so producers are rooted vascular plants and uh, submerged plants phytoplanktons we have we have discussed similarly you will find the zoo, the consumers are zooplanktons periphytons nuisances nectons all these we have discussed in the the lentic habitat similar uh, biota you will find in this uh, slow moving water or pod zone thank you so what are the expected uh, question here from this lotic habitat so the lotic habitat limiting factor zonations difference between uh, riffle or fast moving water and slow moving water biota and uh, their adaptations thank you